Hey guys, so we are going to record, this is going to be a video for our read aloud, Tale of Despero. Um, I'm going to read chapters, I believe 10, 11, and 12 today. Um, we left off with chapter 9 in my last video. But before I get started, I just wanted to kind of give you a little update about what I'm going to be doing for you. Um, I had some people reach out and say that the packet was a little bit difficult. So tomorrow, I'm going to be filming a video of me kind of going over the packet and teaching it to you. Just like I would if we were in class. And I will read through the passage, kind of make annotations with you, and talk through the story or the questions like I would if I were standing in front of you. I think this is going to help. Um, hopefully it helps. I, I want it to help. And if it does, please let me know. And if you like that, then let me know. I can also upload some PowerPoints if that is something y'all are interested in. Um, I've been kind of playing around with that. It was a little bit more difficult to get it to the PowerPoint than I thought it was going to be. So um, I'm still playing around with that. And I'm trying to make this as easy as possible for you guys and as normal as possible for y'all. Um, Anyway, I hope that you guys are doing well. I hope you enjoyed the beautiful sun today. It was so warm. I went and got a slushie from Sonic. Um, that was one happy thing I did for myself today. And I wrote my grandma a card. So I hope that you guys are taking this opportunity to kind of do something happy for you guys as well. Um, <clears throat> the dogs are walking around. And, you know, I love getting mail. I will send you mail. I'm not really, I wanted to send some letters, but I'm not sure if that's, if I'm allowed to yet because of, you know, all the health stuff that's going on. So I'm going to talk to Mr. Ryder about that. So be on the lookout. And, um, yeah, I think that's about it. So we're going to get into the story now. So when we left off chapter nine, Despero was in trouble. And he had admitted to his brother that he was in love. And he was in love with the Princess P. And now he has to go before the Mouse Council, which was called by his father, if you'll remember. And he has to stand before them and get his punishment. And they've already said that they think he's going to have to go to the dungeon with the rats. So we will see what happens now. When we left off, we were he was about to receive his punishment. So we're going to see what actually happens in that mouse council meeting. And maybe what happens with P. Who knows? <clears throat> Stay hydrated, people. Chapter 10. Good Reasons. The entire mouse community, as instructed by the most very honored head mouse had gathered behind the wall of the castle ballroom. The members of the mouse council set atop three bricks piled high and spread out before them was every mouse, old and young, foolish and wise, who lived in the castle. They were all waiting for Despero. Make way, said Furlo. Here he is, I've got him, make way. Furlo pushed through the crowd of mice. Despero clung to his brother's tail. There he is, the mice whispered. There he is. He's so small. They say he was born with his eyes open. Some of the mice pulled away from Despero in disgust, and others, thrill-seekers, reached out to touch him with a whisker or a paw. The princess put a finger on him. They say he sat at the foot of the king. It is simply not done, came the distinctive voice of Despero's Aunt Florence. Make way, make way, shouted Furlo. I have him right here. I have Despero Tilling, who has been called to sit with the mouse council. He led Despero to the front of the room. Honored members of the mouse council, shouted Furlo, I have brought you Despero Tilling as you requested to sit with you. He looked over his shoulder at Despero. Let go of me, Furlo said. 
Despero dropped Furlough's tail. He looked up at the members of the Mouse Council. His father met his gaze and then shook his head and looked away. Despero turned and faced the sea of mice. To the dungeon, a voice cried out. Straight to the dungeon with him, Despero's head, which had been full of such delightful phrases as happily ever after and lovely ears and I honor you, suddenly cleared. Straight to the dungeon, another voice shouted. Enough, said the most very honored head mouse. Most very honored head mouse. That's a mouthful. Or should I say a mouseful? The trial will be conducted in an orderly fashion. We will act civilized. He cleared his throat. He said to Despero, son, turn and look at me. Despero turned. He looked up and into the head mouse's eyes. They were dark, dark eyes, deep and sad and frightened. And looking into them, Despero's heart thudded once, twice. Despero Tilling, said the head mouse. Yes, sir, said Despero. We, the 14 members of the Mouse Council, have discussed your behavior. First, we will give you a chance to defend yourself against these rumors of your agrarious act. Did you or did you not sit at the foot of the human king? I did, said Despero. But I was listening to the music, sir. I was there to hear the song that the king was singing. To hear the what? The song, sir. He was singing a song about the deep purple falling over sleepy garden walls. The head mouse shook his head. Whatever you're talking about is besides the point. The question is this and only this. Did you sit at the foot of the human king? I did, sir. The community of mice shifted their tails and paws and whiskers and they waited. And did you allow the girl human, the princess, to touch you? Her name is P. I don't know about y'all, but that probably wouldn't have mattered that much to me. Never mind her name. Did you allow her to touch you? <sighs> yes, sir, said Despero. I let her touch me. And it was very nice. <gasps> a gasp rose from the assembled mice. Despero heard his mother's voice. Mon Dieu! It is not the end of the world. It was a touch. What of it? It is simply not done, came Aunt Florence's voice from the crowd. To the dungeon, said a mouse in the front row. Silence! roared the most very honored head mouse. Silence! He looked down at Despero. Do you, Despero Tilling, understand the sacred, never to be broken rules of conduct for being a mouse? Yes, sir, said Despero. I guess so, but did you break them? Yes, sir, said Despero. He raised his voice. But I broke the rules for a good reason. Because of music and because of love. Love, said the head mouse. Oh, cripe, said Furlow. Here we go. I love her, sir, said Despero. We are not here to talk about love. This trial is not about love. This trial is about you being a mouse shouted the most very honored head mouse from high atop the bricks and not acting like one. Yes, sir, said Despero, I know. No, no, I, I don't think that you do know. And because you do not deny the charges, you must be punished. You are to be sent as ancient castle mouse law decrees to the dungeon. You are being sent to the rats. That's right, shouted a mouse in the crowd. 
That's the ticket. The dungeon? The rats? Despero's small heart sank all the way to the tip of his tail. There would be no light in the dungeon, no stained glass windows, no library, and no books. There would be no Princess P. But first, said the most very honored head mouse, we will give you the chance to renounce your actions. We will allow you to go to the dungeon with a pure heart. Renounce. Repent. Say that you are sorry, you said at the foot of the human king. Say that you are sorry you allowed the human princess to touch you. Say that you regret these actions. Despero felt hot and then cold and then hot again. Renounce her? Renounce the princess? Mon Dieu, shouted his mother, son! Do not act the fool. Renounce. Repent. What say you, Despero Tilling? I say... I say... I say no, whispered Despero. What? said the head mouse. No, said Despero. And this time he did not whisper the word. I am not sorry. I will not renounce my actions. I love her. I love the princess. There was a bellow of collective outrage. The whole of the mouse community surged toward Despero. The mice seemed to become one angry body with hundreds of tails and thousands of whiskers and one huge hungry mouth opening and closing and opening and closing, saying over and over and over again, to the dungeon, to the dungeon, to the dungeon. The words pounded through Despero's body with each beat of his heart. Very well, said the most honored head mouse. You will die then with a black heart. Thread master, he called. Bring out the thread. Despero marveled at his own bravery. He admired his own defiance. And then reader, he fainted. Chapter 11. Oh, poor Despero. <sighs> when Despero came to, he heard the drum. His father was beating a rhythm that had much more boom and less tat. Together, Lester and the drum produced an ominous sound that went something like this. Boom, 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 tat. Boom, 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 tat. Make way for the thread, cried a mouse who was pushing a wooden spool of thread across the crowd. Make way for the thread. Boom, boom, tat, went the drum. To the dungeon, shouted the mice. Despero lay on his back, blinking his eyes. How he wondered had things go, gone so wrongly. Wasn't it a good thing to love? In the story in the book, love was a very good thing because the knight loved the fair maiden and he was able to rescue her. They lived happily ever after. It said so in the book. Those were the last words on the page. Happily ever after. Despero was certain that he'd read exactly those words time and time again. Lying on the floor with the drum beating and the mice shouting and the threadmaster calling, make way, make way, Despero had had a sudden chilling thought. Had some other mouse eaten the words that spoke the truth? Did the knight and the fair maiden really not live happily ever after? Reader, do you believe that there is such a thing as happily ever after? Or like Despero, have you too begun to question the possibility of happy endings? Happily ever after, whispered Despero. Happily ever after, he said again as the spool of thread came to a stop beside him. The thread, the thread, the thread, murmured the mice. I'm sorry, said the mouse behind the spool, but I have to ask you to stand up. I have to do my job. Despero slowly, got, <coughs> Despero slowly got to his feet. On your hind legs, please, said the thread master. It's the rules. Despero stood on his hind legs. 
Thank you, said the mouse. I appreciate it. While Despero watched, the thread master unwound a length of red thread from the spool and tied a loop. Just enough for the neck, muttered the mouse. No more, no less. That's what the last thread master taught me. Enough, re enough thread for the neck. He looked up at Despero and then back down at the loop of thread. And you, my friend, have a small neck. The thread master raised his arms and put them around Despero's neck. He leaned in close and Despero smelled celery. He could feel the thread master's breath on his ear as he worked at tightening the thread. Is she beautiful? The thread master whispered. What? said Despero. Shh, it's the Princess Beautiful. The Princess P? Yes. She is lovely beyond all imagining, said Despero. Just right, the Threadmaster said. He drew back. He nodded his head. A lovely princess, just so, like a fairy tale. And you love her as a knight loves a maiden. You love her with a courtly love, a love that is based on bravery and courtesy and honor and devotion, just so. How do you know that, Despero said. How do you know about fairy tales? Shh. The mouse leaned in close and Despero smelled celery again, green and alive. Be brave, friend, whispered the Threadmaster. Be brave for the princess, and then he stepped back and turned and shouted. Fellow mice, the thread has been tied. The thread has been knotted. A roar of approval went up from the crowd. Despero squared his shoulders. He made a decision. He would do as the thread master had suggested. He would be brave for the princess. Even if, reader, could it be true, there was no such thing as happily ever after. And here we see Despero getting the thread around his neck. Excuse my dogs because they've decided to go crazy here in this video. Chapter 12, Adieu. The sound of the drum changed again. The final tat disappeared and it became nothing but boom. Boom, boom. Lester used only his tail, bringing it down with great force and seriousness upon the drum. The Threadmaster retreated. The room full of mice fell silent, expectant, waiting. And as Despero stood before them with the red thread around his neck and the 14 members of the Mouse Council perched on the bricks above him, two burly mice came forward. Black pieces of cloth covered their heads and there were slits in their eyes. Well, said the bigger of the two mice, we'll escort you to the dungeon. Despero, Antoinette called out. Oh, my Despero. Despero looked out into the crowd of mice and saw his mother. She was easy to spot. In honor of her youngest mouse being sent to the dungeon, she had put on a tremendous amount of makeup. Each of the hooded mice put a put a paw on Despero's shoulder. It's time, said the one on the left, the first hood. Antoinette pushed her way through the crowd. He is my son, she said. I want to have a last word with my son. Despero looked at his mother. He concentrated on standing before her without trembling. He concentrated on not being a disappointment. Please, said Antoinette. What will happen to him? What will happen to my baby? Ma'am, said the first hood. His voice was deep and slow. You don't want to know. I want to know. I want to know. He is my child. The child of my heart. The last of my mice babies. The hooded mice said nothing. Tell me, said Antoinette. The rats, said the first. The rats said the second. Yes, yes, we, the rats, what of them? The rats will eat him, said the second. Ah, said Antoinette, mon dieu. 
At the thought of being eaten by rats, Despero forgot about being brave, and he forgot about not being a disappointment. And he felt himself heading into another faint. But his mother, who had an excellent sense of dramatic timing, beat him to it. She executed a beautiful, flawless swoon, landing right at Despero's feet. Now you've done it, said the first hood. It doesn't matter, said the second. Step over her. We have a job to do. Nobody's mother's going to stop us. To the dungeon. To the dungeon, repeated the first hood. But his voice, so deep and certain a moment ago, now shook a tiny bit. What do you think he's thinking? He put a paw on Despero and tugged him forward, and the two hoods and Despero stepped over Antoinette. The crowd parted. The mice began again to chant, to the dungeon, to the dungeon, to the dungeon. The drum beat continued, boom, 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 boom. And Despero was led away. At the last moment, Antoinette came out of her faint and shouted one word to her child. That word, reader, was adieu. Do you know the definition of the word adieu? <coughs> Sorry about the dog. Here we go. Do you know the definition of adieu? Don't bother with your dictionary. I will tell you. Adieu is the French word for farewell. Farewell is not the word that you would like to hear from your mother as you're being led to the dungeon by two oversized mice in black hoods. Words that you would like to hear are, take me instead. I will go to the dungeon in my son's place. There's a great deal of comfort in those words. But reader, there is no comfort in the word farewell, even if you say it in French. Farewell is a word that in any language is full of sorrow. It is a word that promises absolutely nothing. When I film the next video, we will read 13, 14, and 15. Hopefully my dogs will not interrupt that time. Um, so anyway, I hope you are liking the Tale of Despero comment and let me know what you think of it. Um, or just say, hey, let me know you watched it. I really love it when y'all do that. Um, and I will upload another one tomorrow.